I'm building a new mix room in my basement starting in two weeks. And today, Martin Pilchner is coming to take final measurements for the plan. And this is kind of a big deal for me because I remember 15 years ago, reading through Mix Magazine and seeing his name as the designer responsible for all these incredible studios all over the world. So the fact that he's gonna be helping me on my room in my house is unbelievable. So I've wanted to create a legit space for a long time, especially ever since I stopped focusing much on producing and tracking and just started focusing more fully on mixing. I've just been working out of bedrooms like this. We've moved to three different homes in that time. And each time I just put up some panels as treatment here. And actually in terms of mixing, it's been okay. Actually, there have been a lot of benefits I've explained in other videos, but for one thing, I've gotten to know NS10s really, really well. I know what they sound like in a variety of different spaces. And I now feel fully confident that I can work in any studio. And as long as they have those speakers, which most of them do, I can make good decisions. And having the imperfections of the room and kind of the ambient noise from outside and from the rest of the house, it actually helps me focus on what's really important in the mix and not get bogged down, going down the rabbit hole, chasing these tiny little details. That said, it does come with its challenges. You know, sometimes the noise outside is just too much, whether it's someone cutting their grass right beside me, or they're doing some construction in the street or trucks going by continuously, it does get hard to mix in those cases but it creates even more of a challenge when it comes to creating content and doing videos for my channel like this. You know, any outside noise or stuff that's happening in the house, even kids screaming and stuff, it can actually ruin a take of the video because it gets into the audio. So that can be frustrating. And then the lighting as well, you know, like any bedroom, I've, I've got a bunch of windows here. And so I can't control the light. So that's always been frustrating in every space that I've been in. But we've got another baby on the way, so we could really use this room as a bedroom. And we decided to finish our basement. So this is the opportunity to uh, create this room, my mix room slash office downstairs. So Martin, what do you think about this space? Is it gonna work? Space is gonna work amazing. Okay. It's gonna be great. What's... A couple of little hurdles to get over, but we, you know, we've got a plan. Yeah, Wait, any like big challenges or issues here? Uh, the challenges are always kind of resolving the services in the building. In this case, you know, with the location of electrical panel, location of a water meter, drains, yeah. structural columns. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but the plan now is to try to make all those things move and hide them. So, right. The first thing was just to decide where to put this room in the basement. So here's the floor plan we ended up with. So you can see we come down the stairs here and then right to the right is gonna be the studio slash office. So we're ending up with it being about 10 feet and change at the narrowest point across. And then in terms of depth, we're about 16 feet. Now in reality, this is probably gonna be a little less down there. We're actually more like, I think 14. We had to make a little bit more room in the gym here. This is gonna be a little home gym uh, behind the office. And we've got storage over here on the left. And then the rest of it is basically a nice open rec space. We have to do have a washroom down there. We're putting in, it's trying to balance the priorities of the home and the family with the business, right? And of course, you know, it would be nice to have a really huge space here, but looking five, 10 years down the road, I didn't want to steal too much of that space from the rest of the family. So once we figured that out, then we had a meeting, Martin and I, and he just asked what I was looking for. So my priorities with this space are isolation, and honestly, the looks of it, the vibe. I want something that looks really great for my content and also feels great to be in and be working in. Now having like amazing, perfect acoustics is really not a top priority for me. I mean, Martin's gonna build that in. He's a master at what he does. But yeah, like I said, I've, I've been fine mixing in bedrooms for like the last, geez, I don't know, six, seven years. Uh, there's no problem with translation, any of that stuff. So. I'm not doing this to have perfect acoustics and monitoring. I'm doing this because I want a space that is at least isolated in terms of the sound traveling from the rest of the house. So I explained, you know, I, I want people to be able to walk or kids to be running upstairs above me and not have that effect, you know, if I'm filming a video. I really think that the video production and experience of creating all that content is really gonna level up. Just having the convenience of not having to worry about 
any outside sounds at all and also just having it look a lot cooler. So after that, Martin drew up uh, the full set of plans and here's what we got. So pretty simple layout here. My desk and monitors are gonna go at this end of the room. Um, you can see it's a little hard to see, but there's four acoustic panels above my head here. And those are gonna be in between um, a lowered bulkhead that goes all the way around the sides and the back of the room. That's gonna help with the HVAC. I'll explain a little bit about that later. And then in terms of acoustic treatment, you can see we're gonna have basically panels everywhere along the wall towards where my desk is. It's gonna be built out a little bit. We'll have base traps there. One of my priorities was that I wanted those to be somewhat reusable or movable. You know, I was thinking if one day down the road, if we have to move for some unforeseen circumstance, I didn't wanna have all the money and, and material that I've invested in this space be completely stuck and built in. So I asked Martin to try and build some of the treatment um, modular so that if I moved, I could actually reuse some of this stuff and take out a bunch of the treatment um, and take it with me to a new space. So he's built that into the plan. Most of the treatment in the room is going to be removable. And it's pretty awesome how detailed these plans are. I mean, he's got pages for the HVAC. Here's one for the electrical showing where all the lights are going and the receptacles and the wiring. So lots of detail, lots of depth in here. And and I'm, I'm learning a lot. All right, material's been dropped off. There's lots of it. This is for our whole basement, not just the studio, but uh, it's beginning. So I'll show you the progress so far. We're about five weeks in. So let me turn the camera around. So we come down the stairs here, right immediately to the right. This is just gonna be a little home gym area there. And then right beside it, this is gonna be the studio. So you can see not, not a ton of progress, right? For five weeks, but um, there have been some setbacks, which I will explain to you. But we also had a lot of work that you can't really see anymore that had to be done with the plumbing. So one of those things over here, this, little bit of rubble here. This is where our main water line used to come in. And so we had to get rid of that, um, which actually came in over here under the floor. We had to dig all that up. And then you can see there's this trench running of new concrete. That had to get rerouted all the way back uh, on the other side of that gym uh, to the utility room. So that took a lot of work. Um, we also have a bathroom on the other side of this wall that's going in. So all of that plumbing had to get done. So that took a while. And uh, because the old plumbing used to be uh, on the underside of these floor joists, um, we had to get rid of that. So they had to run all new plumbing throughout the whole basement, basically. So that took a little while before we even really started working on this room. Uh, there's a few things that are cool that I've been learning that uh, I wanna point out to you. Now, basically what we're doing is we're building a floating box uh, within this space, right? So it's a room within a room. I'm sure you've heard that thing before, but you can see uh, in this room, we've got a double wall, right? So you can see on the back where the concrete is, we're just gonna go with a single wall there. But over here, dividing the spaces, we've got two separate walls. So you can see there's a pretty healthy air gap here between them and it, it's pretty cool. You see, we're, we're first bracing it here until we get the ceiling and everything in, but that will come out. These rooms will be totally separate. You can see on the back wall here against the gym, two walls, about a inch gap in between them here. And that's how you achieve the soundproofing. So you wanna have no material of, between the two rooms touching at all so that, you know, if I'm standing here, you know, if I bang on this outside wall here, no sound or vibration transfers at all to the inner room. And so that's really what's gonna provide a lot of the soundproofing. Up on the ceiling, you have to do that as well. I'll show you that. So you see these little clips, that's where the ceiling's gonna be attached to. And I've got, uh, got one of them here. So this goes into the floor joists and the ceiling. See, so it has this rubber piece here that absorbs any vibration so that people can be walking, running around upstairs. It's not gonna transfer as much below into the ceiling and turn into sound. So this goes on here, 
and then these metal tracks screw on to the bottom there and then the ceiling, the drywall goes into that. So you build this perfectly right. isolated box right. and then you connect this acoustic intercom to it and then everybody yeah. gets in the house gets to hear what you're doing. Right. So the strategy here is we've got to make sure that we have insertion loss between that duct, any noise in that duct and any noise in the room, mm -hmm. which means we're attaching some kind of ductwork or structure that can give us the sound attenuation without affecting the airflow path. So the air can still move in and out of the room, but the sound doesn't. So essentially we're building, you know, mufflers right. for the supply and the return. Another cool feature that Martin designed that hasn't uh, built out yet. Well, if you see over here, we've got this bulkhead where all this HVAC stuff is coming in, right? Well, on the other side of the room, we're gonna build basically a symmetrical bulkhead that's gonna go around the side and the back as well. And then we'll have acoustic panels hanging above me in between. But if you see this little HVAC line there, hopefully you can see that, that's gonna be extended. It's gonna be changed to uh, what's called an acoustic lined flex duct. So it's not gonna be as noisy. That's gonna come over there. It's gonna empty into the bulkhead, which is gonna be an empty cavity lined with acoustic material. And that cavity, switch around, like I said, is gonna extend along the whole side of this wall. And then there will be an air vent over here, you know, so a solid almost 10 feet away from where the air empties in. And that's where the cool air is gonna come out. So that's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna help a lot with the sound transfer through the HVAC ducts, which is what Martin was saying was one of the main problems. And then aside from that, we're gonna be doing three layers, which surprised me. A lot of people just do two. Uh, Martin said we should do three layers on the walls. So not only do we have these separate room within a room walls here, we're also gonna do drywall, then plywood, and then drywall again. So it's gonna be quite thick. I have a feeling this room is going to be very quiet in the end. Now, like I said, we should be farther along for being four or five weeks into this. Here's the problem. You can see in this corner of the room, we've got a big electrical box, right? Now this panel needs to be upgraded. It also needs to be moved away from the corner so that we can frame everything properly. And the problem is we had an appointment for two weeks ago for kind of just the city electric service to come in, shut off the power so we can move all of that. They canceled it and rescheduled us like three weeks out. So we're still a couple weeks out from that thing being moved and the new panel being installed. And then only then can we start framing this wall, framing the other bulkhead, doing all that. Uh, and then after that, we have to get the electrician back in to rough in uh, all the electric here. And we're gonna have a bunch of pot lights some track lights here. He's gotta get all the uh, receptacles along the walls. Uh, and then we can start drywalling. And then, you know, of course, all the finishing touches with the acoustic treatment and stuff, which I still kind of have to choose and go over with Martin. We haven't talked about color schemes or really what the final look of it is gonna be. But right now we're just focusing on, you know, getting the structure of this room done. But we are finishing the rest of the basement. So, you know, it's not like nothing's happening. You can see in the rest of the space, we've gotten quite far here. So we'll continue on with that. And uh, hopefully we don't run into any more delays. But I'm learning a lot, guys. Uh, I'll keep sharing the progress with you as we go along. And I'm super stoked to see the finished product myself and then uh, show it to you. So we'll do another, at least one video, maybe a couple along the way here. Uh, for now, if you wanna see some of my favorite home studio gear, check out this video right here.